everybody, and welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. We're diving into our 19th session overall, um, and it uh, should be interesting based on what's been happening. First and foremost, however, though, before we do begin, I have some announcements. Uh, if you guys noticed... There is an application up on the Discord to join a Sunday game on the channel at 9, what time is it? 9, PM, 9 p.m. Eastern Time? Yes, 9 p.m. Eastern Time to join uh, a campaign that will be starting on Sunday nights that will be all about delving into the new release adventure book for D&D 5th Edition, Descent into Avernus. So if you want to play in a little campaign of four players that goes into... That starts in Baldur's Gate and ends up in the first layer of the Nine Hells of Avernus. Sign up. There is one spot left. So, got some really good applications and people. I'm like, these are cool people. Yes. So, I got one more sp slot left to go. So, if you want to get that nice little juicy last slot and come play in hell with people, then uh, check it out and sign up. Be a nice person. That's how you get in. Being a nice person. <laughs> also, if you submit multiple applications to try to increase your chances, you'll probably just not get looked at. <laughs> um, yeah, and just try to answer the questions in the document. Also, you have to be 19 years of age or older. I generally don't want people too young on the channel. Bad experiences with people very young. Just not taking things seriously. And it's not fun. We're here to take things seriously, have fun, and just have a good time. Don't serious fun. Serious fun. Don't be a butthole. Um, yeah. And then uh, eventually we'll do a little session zero with the cast of that show to figure out what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. Have a session zero, figure out how their characters are in the world of Forgotten Realms. And... Eventually, join us on this journey as their poor, poor souls get crammed into hell, and they have to deal with that because the book is damn cool. So uh, check it on D and D Beyond if you haven't. It's pretty fucking cool. I can't wait to mess with infernal motorcycles. Basically, <laughs> so excited. Um, and I'll be borrowing elements of Descent into Avernus probably for the other games as well, especially if in Beneath the Tide they do end up going into the Nine Hells. I'm gonna borrow some stuff from that book to, th to just let them play with give to them as little little gifts of chocolate but yeah enough rambling about that sign up it's cool it's a cool adventure I'm extremely excited about it it's I haven't been this excited to run a D&D &D core adventure since Curse of Strahd and that came out in like 2016 so yeah what else what else um also, please check out our rules and guidelines that we have in the rules on our Discord channel. I had to do some tweaking today to fix it. Apparently, people couldn't view it because I forgot to enable view past posting history on that channel. So check out our rules, please. It's pinned in that discussion as well as pinned in our announcements. Uh, and basically, it's just a guideline of how to treat each other while you're on our channel, talking to people, and especially if you're playing in the games. The entirety of the core cast that we have right now and all across all the games have signed but one person, which is great. So kudos to everyone who took the time to actually read over the document and get an idea of what we're trying to do to make this a safe and inclusive community for people who like to roll dice and play with people, play people that don't exist. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I want to make it, again, I want to make it safe for everyone who comes in. I don't want anyone to feel like they're uncomfortable or being treated poorly or bullied and as we've had some incidents in the past that I don't want to reflect what this is as a whole um, check it out sign it if you're a cast member if you're not a cast member you don't have to sign it just keep in mind kind of what we're trying to go for here and also we have a cool little system we hopefully not needing to use called the red card system but more is explained about that in the document and if you are playing a game and you want to use the red card system basically it'll explain in the document it is done anonymously so you don't have to worry about people finding out if you were uncomfortable to scene. Because anonym, an, an, you need to be anonymous about some stuff. Because um, it just makes everyone more comfortable. We also 
have a podcast on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, whichever one of those. Technically, Apple Podcasts and iTunes are the same thing, technically. Um, to check it out, you just need to look up Mimics and Monstrosities, and you'll find the podcast, which is basically being done right now on our pirate campaign, Beneath the Tide, which I believe we have our first five episodes up on there, split into nice little snack-sized pieces you can just nibble on and nibble on with your ears and listen to. Um, and, uh, you know, just listen. Listen to some pirates doing piratey things. Well, somewhat. Um, and then, speaking of Beneath the Tide, you can join us tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time for our 30th episode of Beneath the Tide, which is crazy to think of. Uh, and, yeah, speaking of shows, as our last announcement, Demystifying DMing and Soldiers of the Lich Queen are currently on high HS. Demystifying DMing, I do not know when that will come back, but it will come back with a bunch of new episodes that Sam and I are kind of talking about what to do with those episodes. I've given him some good suggestions that I think are good suggestions that I would like to listen to his input on. Um, and then Soldiers of the Lich Queen should be coming back. I can actually announce when that comes back. Uh, that should be coming back the 29th of September. So September 29th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I believe, I could be wrong. If I am wrong, I will rectify that in the Discord as an announcement. But uh, Soldiers of the Lich Queen, September 29th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It'll be myself and Rose, joined by the two cast members we've selected. I'm very excited to see what they're playing, uh, and to see our awesome official character artists make their characters, because, cool stuff. Other than that, it's time to continue our little shenanigans in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Last time, though, You guys just did a little bit of wandering, had a little fun adventure walking around. Nothing really harmless happened. You guys, or lots of harmless things happened. You guys had a merry old adventure. Everyone was happy and calm and relaxed. It was a good time. And as you guys were moving through the Twisted Caverns, a trap was twi triggered. A, a trap was triggered. A trap was triggered. By August 10 foot pole, moving it around, hit a spider silk strand that I had described last session, and the strand snapped and rocks fell from the ceiling, mm. which alerted the two driders that were hiding in a cave alcove to about the north of that little room. North, north, northwest, northeast, south, northeast, south. <laughs> the driders attacked. The first rider was taken out relatively easily. Easily? Relatively? Second rider, however, decided not to be like its brethren and scaled up a wall and was attacking from the ceiling, effectively putting itself out of reach of the party. Things began to get a little sketchy, and the party decided to flee after Melody had summoned a fiend that I cannot remember the name of, Tanarukt? So it a fiend yeah. that unfortunately just didn't have enough range to reach the drider on the ceiling, and as the party was fleeing, the drider mentioned to his children that your food is leaving, in which a mass of giant spiders swarmed out of the cave where the driders were from. Thankfully, <coughs> bless you, thankfully with a last minute command to his fiendish friend, the Tanarukt stayed behind and distracted the Drider and the giant spiders as the party fled off into the darkness back towards the Alchemist to rest up for a little bit before deciding to head back to their Etten friend's cave, Jibber Jabber, to find that he had caved in both of his heads, or it had looked like he caved in both of his heads, with his own great club and water dribbling out from his chin. After being slightly confused, and one of you being distraught about Jibber Jabber's demise, you all decided to just 
head back to the alchemist and see if he could help out with answers and finding out that the alchemist was in fact not in his little cave where his potions were and you all assumed he had gone off to just probably gather supplies elsewhere in the Twisted Caverns. And as you all sort of gather yourselves in his little his little cubby of the cave, that's what we're going to pick up with you all, the four of you just standing there and just looking around. Yeah, so, guys, what do we want to do? Well, um, I'm going to need to take some kind of rest. Hmm. How, are you, how are you feeling, big guy? I'm, uh, I'm okay. Okay. The rest wouldn't help me right now, unless it was a long one. Right. And we can't do that yet. No. I'm curious how your friend died. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, what did you say? I didn't quite catch that. I'm curious how oh. Jibber Jabber died. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. That water on his chin, that was bad water. It smelled bad, really bad. Yeah, I don't think it was very good, whatever it was. Mm. Poisonous, I think. Yeah. I know there was a river down south. Is that yeah. right? That's right? Yeah. Yeah, they told us, jibber and jabber. Mm-hmm told us that the water was getting bad, but why Why then would he go drink that water? It makes no sense to me. Not really smart, but that makes no sense. Did you ever, ever tell me the reasons why the water was bad? I know there was something with um, I forget the, I forget the names of the creatures, but he didn't know why. No. Okay. So, what should we do now? Should we go? How bad are you? I'm little, little one. You're very, bad. very, very bad. Yes. She's at one hit point. <laughs> I'm at one hit point. Yeah, because she was not unconscious. Right. Yeah. Okay. Rest, help. So yeah, that would help for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we can hang here for an hour, are you guys. Go. Yeah, we're not going anywhere with you, like that. I thought that's what we did at the end of the I, last session. Oh, did, you guys, did you guys did take a long, a short rest at the end of the last session. Oh, then I, yeah. I forgot to do the roll of dice. I'll, I'll do it. And I also oh. forgot that Melody found and attuned to a wand of wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! And oh, and you guys found. Oh, man, I forgot so much. And you guys found a black box that had a withered heart inside of it, and I believe you just set it down on the ground and just like oh, I'm just gonna leave that here. Yeah, we left it. We left it uh, in. Yeah. in uh, yeah. yeah. Well, this last room. time. Is it still in here? Oh, yeah. You, you guys are waking up from, okay. your, from your short rest, and it's still like, <laughs> it's like, sitting hmm. there. I thought the alchemist might have taken it, and that's where he's gone. <laughs> no. He attuned to it, just back. died somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still sitting right there where you left it. In the batshit mud mixture on the ground. Neat. Yeah. Wow, I actually managed to roll really well. I'm shocked. Nice. <laughs> Usually, when it's vital, I don't roll so well. So. Yeah, welcome to D and D. <laughs> okay. Feeling a bit better now. Oof. All right. Uh. So I'm uh. Don't mind, Trin. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you all of our healing potions. 
Okay. Just so when you go down, any one of us <laughs> can kill you. When? When you go down. <laughs> when? Um. Yeah. Oh, how many do we have? Four. Okay. Let me find those. Well, that's happening. All right. All right. What is everybody else doing? I'm just going to wander around and look at these uh, potions on the wall, on the shelves. They look like they're not good potions. No, they look like they're like either failed experiments or half-brewed potions that aren't finished yet, and a lot of other of the vials are just like potion ingredients. Hey, Melody, any of this stuff any use to you? Hmm, let's have a look. I mean, I don't want to really what, what is Melody? stealing from the alchemist, but I mean, if we are going to steal from the al alchemist, you, there's that book you gave Yeah, me. let's not bother stealing anything unless uh, unless we uh, properly uh, ask need. him if we can steal Let's see. It. Let me see what we got here. Uh, oh. Does Mel can Melody see anything that he might find useful? He's got uh, nope. an herbalism kit nope. and stuff like that. Just Melody's history. Not really. Just a bunch of meh. Okay. It's beyond me. Sorry, not my not my specialty. Oh well. Yeah, be good at everything. What about, right. you? what about you? What about you, Mikus? What are you doing? Uh, Mikus is standing there, slack jawed, with a little bit of drool coming out of his mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what What is the light in this room? Like, should I still be holding my? Um, I'd say that he probably keeps this room well enough lit for himself while he's experimenting and well, working gonna, on potions. So I'm going to sheath it while we're here. Then. All right. Plus, I imagine like. It doesn't say there's a cauldron in here, but I'd assume there is a cauldron on the stone slab, kind of a small cauldron. And the fire underneath it would probably illuminate some of the like, room as well. So that's probably where most of the light is coming from, is from the cauldron's fire. Alright. So, do you guys want to head south then to check out this water? Uh... For exploration purposes, yeah, yeah, but I do, I am inclined to uh, want to finish off that spider den yeah. after a long rest. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's long term? Relatively? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't see why not. Okay, so we're not going to go left. Go left. <laughs> he always wants to go left. Um, no. I don't know. Well, don't if we so. if we if we sit here and look at this here uh, map I've drawn out. Nice. <laughs> uh, we. <laughs> nice. We could head south from our position. There's a there's a path that we saw down here. Uh, and then like two over here. Yeah, and then there was another one next to Jibber Jabber. Mm -hmm. Another two next to Jibber Jabber, probably heading to the same place. Uh, do I know the ones going south of Jibber Jabber? Since that's kind of the area I was in before. You know, it probably leads right to the river. Okay. Yeah, I think the one near Jibber Jabber went to the river, so we might want to try that first. All right. Do we want to go to the river? I'm assuming that's where we're going. Well, either way, we need more information, and I would like to uh, obtain it when we're in control and not when uh, something surprises us. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now that's smart. All right. All right. So we're heading to Jibber Jabber and then heading south from Jibs. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hogan pulls out his sword. Yeah, flame toe. 
incendio. And it flames. Please don't sue us. <laughs> yeah. yes. yes, please. Please don't. What other copyrighted material can we reference? None. Brett. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I could change that to... Uh, 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 I, I, I imagine... Incendiary. Uh, I imagine incendio is fine. <laughs> it's probably uh, fine. It's, it's basically just Latin. <laughs> yeah. You don't think J.K. Rowling is like following us? No. Eyes up, fellas. You do not see no. the piercers as you exit this little cave. Uh, if if uh, if we say we're moving at like half speed, mm -hmm. uh, would you say that like we would either roll perception or you'd have us roll perception at the right time? I mean, at at certain times, if yes. Taking a slow. Yes. Okay. Cool. And if you guys are moving at full speed, you could do perception checks with disadvantage. Because I right. I read up on how that works. Because I never knew how it worked. Now I figured it out. Are we also going to try and be uh, a little sneaky as well? I think it's probably best too. All right. I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh, ste not stealth checks, everybody, please. Not bad. Yeah. Do we just tell you? Yeah. Uh, seven. Okay. Fourteen. All right. Thirteen. Okay. Here's the guy. Them bugbears are, are, are okay. sneaky. Lot. Probably his little bat cloak thing, Ed. <laughs> That's right. He's uh, a uh, bat bear. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Goddamn. So, yeah, you guys are all, I'd say the, uh, the, uh, Good cell checks kind of outweigh the not so great ones. Right on. So, uh, we just troop over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, can we like Skyrim quick travel there? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys make it back to. Where Jibber Jabber's body still lies face down in the bat shit and mud mixture that is the entirety of the ground of this dungeon. His club, still in the same place where it was left. <clears throat> His body starting to smell more than it did. Uh can we appraise the club? See if it's a decent weapon? <laughs> nah, it looks like just a piece of like wood. All right, it's not like a great club. No, it's it's a great club made of wood. I mean, it no one. It's probably a little too big for anybody to carry. Right on. Okay. Is there anywhere in this cave that I've seen so far that looked like it might have like soil, like like dirt? I mean, it's all dirt. It's just mixtures of oh. back back bat poop oh, like and, bat poo and, and poop. mud. Yeah. All right. I guess that's not great. Okay. Never mind. Dirt is just really old poop. Right. That is true. <laughs> back guano might be good fertilizer. Actually, it is. Oh. All, all poop is not, good fertilizer. Not, uh, don't know if it's great for burials, though. Uh, all right. No. Melody's going to peek, peek in that area. You see Wait. a Tarrasque coming for you. No. Um, wouldn't that be great? Be a very tiny Tarrasque. No, yeah. A very tiny Tarrasque. <laughs> You see that, and Ogden, on your side with the flame tongue, you would see this. Oh, I guess Melody wouldn't be able to see too much since he... Well, I'd, uh, the radius of flame tongue would help you out still, because flame right. tongue's out, it's got 40 light, forty like, feet kind of, light, 40 feet dim. Yeah. Bouncing off the walls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The shiny, poopy walls. Damp. The dank. damp, the dank walls. That dank, that dank wall. All right. Yeah, and Ogden, with your 40 feet, it'd be what? 10, 10 foot squares, 10, 20, yep. Yeah. Excellent. You see the mouth. This You see uh -oh. water. water. All right. 
All right, as we're as we're getting up on there, hey fella. So if we see anything that looks like it's what killed uh uh Jabber Jabber, do you, do we just want to immediately fight it? Or do do we want I to see water and understand it? Well, won't that depend on whether it's like you know, if, if it's like something that we can talk to, we could learn something from it. But if it's just like a mindless creature, obviously. Right. All right. And Melody pulls out his wand of wonder. Yeah! Here we go. Yeah. All right. I see water, guys. Yeah, let's try to stay away from it a little bit until we know. As you look out, you just see so all this black wall is wall. It's really the path goes right into the water. There's no other way around. That's just water. Is it um, flowing? It is. It's flowing, but actually, no, it is not flowing. It is very still. Oh. Does it stink? Yeah. Everything down here stinks. Yeah, but does it smell like like jibber jabbers water on its face? Um, a little bit, yeah. Hmm. I tell them that. Huh. Uh, Melody would like to uh, get a closer look at this water. Sure. Is he picking anything up on it? It stinks. Get next to it. Does it uh, look like it's got a lot of sediment? Um, no. It looks clean, but it stinks real bad. Mm. Mm. And I like that smell. You would expect to see like little fish swimming about, like cave fish, or like crustaceans crawling around, and it just looks like it's devoid of anything. Hmm. I don't think I want to put Willie in there. <laughs> <laughs> Once Willie's gone, I don't think I can get him back. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, I'm not much for taking any risks with this water. If it's poisonous or has some type of disease flowing through it, I don't. I, that'd be a no. That'd be a no. Um, so pretty much a dead end, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess for the moment, it's still unsettling, though. Uh, let me check something real quick. Okay, yeah, never mind. Mm. And what? Try a different trail down. Yeah, yeah. We could. yeah. Yeah. We might get more of a, you know, see more of it. Another tunnel. All right, you guys make your way back. Oh, oh. Yeah, slow, slow pace, slow pace. We're making sure. <laughs> Open area. Gander. Ten foot pole. Yep. <laughs> you don't really need to use the ten foot pole because you can you have the light illuminating everything. Yeah. Uh but this area is just again more of that bat that sloppy just thick bat guano mud. And as you step into this room you remember that this is like knee deep bat guano mud. Oh, half speed. Yep. Alright. And you see a little tunnel going down right here. All right, uh, hey guys, if we have to run from something, this isn't going to be a very good uh, escape route. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, what, what do you think, then? I'm just letting you you guys know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't have anything to fix it. Just uh, all right. Work it out. We though. could have someone wait out here, but I don't know how that would solve much. 
No. They get to run away and not die. Yeah. I, a... I can do that. <laughs> Good runner. Uh, there are some big mushrooms, right? Not in this part. But in, in like, nearby, near yeah, Jibber Yeah, the 40 feet tall mushrooms. Uh, what, what do you fellas say that we chop down some of them mushrooms and, uh, make, like, uh, little stepping, stepping hats from their caps? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, how tall are those Zerkwoods? 40 feet. So if we chop one of them down, we could just lay it across here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could kind of make a path so that we're not, you know, trudging through this muck. Mm hmm. Okay. Right. Back up here into Jibber Jabbers, I think there was something there, right? There was. Okay. Um, I'll hold my uh, sword. Uh, I pass my great axe to Mika so he can chop down a couple. Because he, uh, he doesn't have an uh, axe, does he? Like a great axe? We just don't find the tall, skinny one. Okay. There really isn't any skinny ones, they're pretty thick. Oh, that's good. Makes them easier to walk on. Well, uh, Mikas, you chop from one side, I'll chop from the other with my sword. I'll get him down pretty fast. Alright. Uh, both of you give me attack rolls against this Zerkwood. <laughs> Attacking him. 22. Hits. See, what would the attack bonus for that be? Well, uh, proficiency bonus. Uh, if you're proficient in martial weapons, you could add your proficiency bonus. Hit. Okay. Uh, plus. So 13. Uh, yeah, you hit too, but the axe doesn't really go in that deep. It's a very woody, hardy, like, stalk. It kind of just, like, you take a nice little chip out of it. Just tsh. Same with the flame tongue. The flame tongue takes a nice little tsh, chip out of it. Even though it's burning, it's just... Tsh. Melody's, uh, Melody's going to keep an eye out. All right, give me a... Give me a Should we keep uh, hitting it or what? You can most certainly try to keep hitting it. An eye out and an ear out. All right. <laughs> I guess since he since he's only four, it's being twenty four hits. You get you get the sense that chopping down this rickwood might take a couple of hours. Oh God! Because oh, it's a very time. it's a very thick and sturdy trunk. So we'll say three hours or so pass, and you guys eventually notice as this forty foot tall, very thick powerful heavy mushroom starts to fall either towards Ogin or Mikis because you guys are cutting from that angle which way is it going to fall and it starts to tilt Mikis gets like one good oh, swing no. in with the great axe and it starts to tilt towards Ogin and Egris and start to fall I need you both to give me dexterity saving throws oh Trin Trin that's right I said Egris didn't I you did. Yeah, yeah. Trin and Ogden. Oh. Dexterity saving throws. Dexterity save? Yep. Okay. That was a 16. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. All right. You both hug the wall. Ogden a little bit slower as this tree, this Zerkwood tree, <laughs> into the ground. Or the Zerkwood what? mushroom slams into the ground. Doesn't hit either of you, but it makes a loud, like, <laughs> Echoing, like basically a tree just fell inside of a cave. So imagine that as an echo inside a cave. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh no, driders. Oh. <laughs> and basically, when that thing falls, it is 40 feet. So it takes up four squares from where Mikus 
and Augenar, because this was the Zerk wood right here. So you guys get 10, 20, 30, 40, right there. 40 foot long little tree. Jeez. And during that entire ordeal melody, you're just standing there for three hours looking down that tunnel and you do not see a thing or hear a thing. Yeah. Except the tree slam into the ground. Yeah, kaboosh. Right on. Well done. Okay, now. Took you guys long enough. Jeez. You want to try? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. We might, uh, need, might, need, might need chopping. <laughs> That's true. Um, it's a bit long. It's a bit big. Well, <laughs> Mikas and I can... Uh, it's just mushrooms. It shouldn't be all that heavy. Yeah, is it is it is it heavy? <laughs> it's a it's a forty foot tall tree tree. It's a forty yeah, foot like tall, yeah, tree like mushroom. Yeah. It is yeah. used as a source of timber to build things. Yeah. It's very heavy. It's yeah. a tree basically. Yeah. Mm. So we're looking at about you, uh, we have lots of strength. I can push pull drag twelve hundred tons. Yeah, and I'm the same. Uh, you both I mean, could help. You both could I easily just drag the tree yourselves. Yep. One push, one pull. Basically, you guys can move this without any issues, yeah. The two of you, at least, yeah. Just, uh, poof, <laughs> on your shoulders. And <laughs> Tran, don't you love these fellas? List. I mean, they come in handy. I'm. <laughs> so where would you guys you like to... Where you guys, so you guys pick this thing up? Yep. And use it like as a makeshift bridge to carry around? Cool. Um... Where do you guys want to carry this to? Well, do we want to go this way? What are, which way are we going? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think I can make that jump. All right. So you guys are going, you guys are taking the tree this way. Or are you taking it? Oh, okay. I don't all right, this way. Well, I thought we were just going to use that it for a bridge across yeah, this stuff. Yeah, a little bridge so that... Uh, Some of these littler we, people. Yeah, we saw that the swampy stuff ended about right here, right? Yes. So if we just made it a nice little bridge, it'd give us a good running platform to either go, you know, just a minimal amount of time spent in the muck. So look, I'd I'd say probably like yeah, yeah. So right like here, wherever you deem the uh, muckiness to begin. The worst, yeah, where's the worst muck? Probably right right in the middle, like right here. Yeah, that would be good, and then we can just jump off the yeah, side. Yeah, we could. Yeah, jump from. Yeah. All right, well done. <laughs> All right. So, who was at the All front? Right. Who was at the front of this log? Me. All right, Ogden, you're at the front. You see, dead end, with a bunch of crystals growing out of the wall. Ooh, yeah. crystals. Oh. Uh, Are they like glowing? Is that what that looks? Like? No, they're just they're just really, oh. really just shimmery. Ella, do you want to check out? I would like to. Yeah. Let me let me have a look at these. Okay. I only will cautiously approach. Could you uh could you back me up? I need the light. Yep, right there. Thanks, buddy. All right, Melody will scope it out. You see t about ten or so fist sized just crystals growing out of the wall. They're shiny. Mm. Melody will. Tap on one. It lets out a blood curdling scream. No, it doesn't do anything. It's just a crystal. Are they just different? Are they like a? Would you explain it as like a, a quartz? Like it's just a bunch of quartz, or yeah, like more like like multi multi colored like quartz. Yeah. 
Melody will grab a couple of them. <laughs> All right, you grab two. A couple uh, is two. How many are you grabbing? Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll, there's ten total on this. I've wall. got a bag of holding. I will take all of them. <laughs> all right, you get ten fist-sized crystals worth ten gold pieces each. What? Oh. Oh. rocks. They're very pretty. And that's all you see. Just wall. Just cave, cavern wall immediately in front of you. Okay. That was interesting. <laughs> Can we take our log? Yeah. Lovely. You guys could actually probably carry the log with Melody and Trin on it. I just realized. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah they could just like whoosh, pop out of the log. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, where are you guys moving your log to next? Where are you guys dropping oh. logs next? Yeah. Uh, uh, Title Mikas, episode, Dropping Logs. Mikas and Alvin are carrying it. Um, so we're slogging through this stuff anyway. Yeah. But we got long legs, right? You guys have, yeah, you guys are pretty tall, so the mud's probably oh. at your knees. Oh. Yeah. How much would you say those each crystal weighs? Oh, um, it doesn't say. Uh, let's say... Like a pound? Like a pound, yeah. Okay. 100 Thanks. pounds each. Yeah. <laughs> Bag holding ruptures Bag. and everything is Thousand gone. Pounds. And all of us get sucked in. <laughs> uh, I think... Oh, yeah, if the bag ruptures... No, it's, the bag ruptures just the contents get sent to the astral oh, plane. okay. Uh, gotcha. If you try to put another... If you put another bag inside of it, an extra-dimensional space inside of it, then it opens up a rip that sucks people into the astral plane and then... Different, that'd be a whole different campaign in general. <laughs> we the The astral plane right. is not a fun place. Okay, you guys get on the log. We'll uh, carry it, I guess. So if you guys just put all your tokens on the log, I can actually move all your tokens at the same time to suck the boats. Okay. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> I'm just imagining so, just straddling the log. Yeah, like, Melody kind of weighs the log down a little bit. Because he's like yeah. seven thousand pounds or whatever he is. Well, Trin, Trin doesn't even need it. She's got no. that that broom. That's right. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, flying over all of it. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Where are you moving this log to? Just put a little doink on the map. I'd imagine we're going this way, right? Yeah, we're going that way. Okay, you start hauling it that way through the thick mud. And you guys basically get to like this wall, and the, the log probably doesn't actually fit through this part. Yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't. It wouldn't fit through here or through here. I just kind of yeah jump. Thanks, off. guys. Yeah, you can jump off. I'll carry you guys are... this end over to uh, over to this way, so it's oh. actually sort of nice. a bridge when we come back. Nice, nice. So like that. Uh, yeah. I can I can, this. I can fix your I'll just, I'll fix your tokens. So. <laughs> All right. So which way? Sorry. I'm thinking Is kind it's... of. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. That'll get us across. Yeah, like right there. And you guys, yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah, and you could probably jump. You can try to jump the gap. Yeah, cool. All right. Yep. You drag okay. it and you just plop it right there. Okay. I need to put a GM note on that thing. I've been going to slog um, across here. No, I don't, I'll, I'll remember that's a log. I'll remember. All right, guys. Uh, south or east and then south? I'm following you, even if I'm leading. Let's just go south. All right. Excellent. I'll get every you know, route in this area. Og, and you hear chewing. Chewing. Not like flesh chewing, but like... Like beaver? No. no. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's the first thing that I thought of. <laughs> more like grinding, like stones being ground up. Would, would it sound familiar to Melody? It wouldn't sound familiar to anybody. Okay. Because unfortunately you have not heard one of these things eat something. 
Oh God. Shh, guys, I hear something. I would need everybody to do stealth checks again, please. Ooh, again, huh? Fifteen. Fifteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Twelve. Twelve? Twenty fur. Twenty fur? <laughs> Alrighty. That's way too sneaky for such um, a Alrighty. So. Good job, everyone. Oh, I wouldn't say that yet. Well. You hear the grinding stop. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. And then the grinding goes back to grinding. Wow. Mm -hmm. Phew. Um. Small one, we go grab him again. Um, can I see anything from here? Like if I'm down here. Um. Of course, my light. Hmm. Yeah. So it's whatever's different. up there can see my light too. I. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll stay back. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Mikus, how about you, buddy? You, you're damn sneaky, and you got you can see in the dark, from what I understand. Yeah, Would sure. you mind uh, scouting this out for us? Uh, Hogan might go back around the corner so his light doesn't show. Okay. Uh, I'll get down there and just peek around. Kerner. Mikus, as you peek around the Kerner, I love it. You see three of those Zorns, but look like they're actually the size they're supposed to be. And they're feasting on the crystals all along the wall, just eating them. Totally not paying you any attention. Like blocking the path. It's some of some of them uh, creepy looking fuckers, babies. All right, all y'all. Remember uh, that big rock feller? Yeah, they can. Uh, we, we did learn that they can smell minerals. Yeah, they you get you you get you understand that they smell minerals and they eat them. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, quick! Just put all your all your mineral like stuff, like your gold and your stuff, in the bag of holding. Right. You're gonna give it back, right? Yeah. Right. Of course. How many do you got there? Um, I have. I give him my. You just keep it. You just keep it tied in a little pouch, and we'll just toss yeah, it. Yeah, I'll just give you the pouch. Um, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> just eating, just constantly, just chomp, 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 chomp. They, when they eat, they kind of like. Their heads, because their heads on the top, their mouths on the top of their head, so they kind of like tilt their head forward and chew, 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 chew from their scalp. Uh. Hmm. Should I do a quick comprehend languages just in case? We need to try to speak to any of them. Do they speak? Um, I don't know. Do what do you know? I mean, I know that I did a roll. Probably I not. I okay. Probably not. I'm okay. I don't know if you want to do that, you can. Uh, yeah. N none of y'all have anything else that uh, they might find delicious, right? Oh, I have oh. Uh, 700 gems. I have. Or gold worth of gems. And uh, 45 gold. Yeah. I have my uh, so amulet, but... Don't put them in... Don't put the stuff in... Don't delete any of that. Just oh, no. right. say that you gave it to me, and I'll just give it right back when we're done with this. Okay. I am. All right. <laughs> so we, we we take everything that, <laughs> that might smell good to them, pack it away so that they can't smell it in another dimension. Uh, so do you think do you guys want to try moving past them? 
I mean, it might be a bit risky. We could always, is there some way we could try to distract them? With they them? appear, <laughs> they appear distracted because they're basically because eat, they're, eating the wall. Yeah. Yeah, but they're distracted in right the area we want to be. Um, well, I mean, we could go all out, kill them, and just take all of the va valuable crystals that are there. We could do that. All right. We could do that. Are you guys up for a fight? Yeah, always. <laughs> well, almost always. I don't know. I never fought one of these before. So. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea if they're how serious this is. <laughs> well, we fought a massive one before, and they can get around real, real sneakily. They can like okay. just move through they, the they earth. Tunnel they want. underneath okay. us. These are small ones. They're about uh, six or seven feet tall. So they're medium sized instead of large. Yes. Okay, and you guys fought a big one, and you're good? Yeah, well, well, <laughs> sure. We're alive. Uh, that's true. Uh, do you remember what uh, what worked on him? I know that uh, piercing and slashing didn't do so good, right? Bludgeoning. Broke him apart by punching him. My hand. Uh, I didn't have a hammer. Hmm. Hmm. I might. I might. I might have oh, some that might sorry. shake them to their core, if needed. Did you say you didn't have a hammer, Ogden? I. Did you say that? Used my great axe, not my. I didn't. Oh. I was saying I had a great hammer. I didn't have a great axe, but I oh. punched punched the last one. Because if you want a hammer, I have one, if that's easier to... Uh, you mean like a little nail hammer? No, I have a, a great hammer. Mm -hmm. Or a war hammer. Oh. So, uh, if that's easier against these guys, it's available to you. <laughs> While we're doing this, can Melody be casting uh, Comprehend Languages? Yep. Okay. And I'm, I don't want to get into any fights with Mika's gun, so I'm just like... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh. So, the, uh, uh, the, the one that we came in contact with, it had something against magic as well, right? Am I remembering that? Like, it was... It didn't take... It didn't take certain damage from certain types of magic. Yeah, it didn't take damage I... from uh, magic weapons hmm. or half like resistant. Something like that. I remember exactly. Boom! 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 boom. Hey, me, me, kiss, me, kiss. Uh. <laughs> So, uh, hmm. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, that these uh, Zorns, do you think that uh, we should give them a chance and talk to them? I mean, we could go for the talk first, and then if that goes bad, then we start with the, the hammers and stuff. <laughs> the spells. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a good one. You gotta go. <laughs> I got a good one. Okay. Um, yeah, I have no idea if these guys even would be able to have a conversation, but we could definitely try it. At that point, we're gonna get in a fight anyways. So. Right. Huh. 
Uh, what do you think, Justin? Should we <laughs> proceed? I mean, yes. Because <laughs> if okay. people are watching, I mean, kind of just watching nothing yeah. happens, yeah. Yeah, alright. So, I still have control over his token, so I can just yeah. yep. move them if needed. Alright. Uh... And would you say he's finished casting yeah. Comprehend Languages? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to hop out here. Maybe get their attention for a moment. See if they're super hostile. And then try to squeeze by them. Okay. Sure. All right. Hogan, Hogan doesn't trust these, but he'll come along behind you. Okay. Yeah. Now you see that they're still munching away on those crystals on the wall. Melody will knock on the side of the wall so that he doesn't scare him as he approaches. All Just three of them turn. The noise. They all hey. turn to look at you. Hey. And with your comprehend languages, you understand that they're speaking a language called Terran. And oh. They say, Oh, hello. Hey, hey fellas. How you, how you doing today? Looks like you got a nice gourmet going on there for yeah, you. Yeah, it's ours. Don't take it. Don't touch it. Just ours. No problem. Would you mind if we get by you? We we pass through the through the tunnel nearby. Oh sure, go. Cool. Yeah, of course. As long as you don't take our crystals. Well, you guys are just swell. A pleasant bunch. We thank you very much. Uh, yeah. my name is my name is Melody. Hi. This here's Mikis. Hi. Everyone, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Tren. Hogan. Oh, we don't know what they're saying, but hello. That's just a... The noise that they made was their was their voice or was their name. Oh. Okay. But, yeah. Anyway, we're generally we we're generally pretty pretty peace loving and tranquil. If you don't wake us up. Oh. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you guys were. <laughs> you guys gonna. <laughs> Take a nap soon. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. No. You know, wake you up. All no. Right. Cool. Well, it was nice talking to you. You got you fellows are swell. Um, good eating. Thank yeah. you. If you want to know in the future, we're neutral alignment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you want to know in the future, um, we really like to eat treasure. Like gems and coins. Uh, so if you ever want to, like, strike a bargain with us, you could, we can give you information for stuff. Okay, bye. All right. Sounds good. We will take that into account. Keep that in mind. And they turn back around and start chewing on the wall. And Melody will convey everything that they told him to the group. Yep. Okay. Okay, squeezes past. Yeah, sorry. It, I, I can't see. Ogden. <laughs> what a darn. So dumb of me. Bumped my way through. First time in a long time something's actually gone well. <laughs> yeah, what? what yeah. Hmm. That went uh, better than 10, 20, 30, 40. Oh, water again. Oh, yeah, one, one, of, one of the Zorns that was one that was talking with humility. Oh, uh, just so you know, if you're trying to cross the river, it splits this entire level in half. So it's you. You eventually, if you want to explore, get down lower to the next level. You you have to cross the river eventually. Right. Uh, do we see a boat anywhere? A raft? Nope. What What did he say? Mm. Do you know how deep the river is? No, you could probably just wade through it pretty easily, I think, for someone as nimble as you. It's uh, waist deep. Huh. All right. There's no current. Nothing lives in it. Why? Why does nothing? Oh, I, I, sorry, he can't, <laughs> I can't talk to him. Yeah, you're saying that... We could always take the current, uh, the or current, the, the stream, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's nothing in it. 
It's ta the water's tainted. It's tainted, so I don't advise just drinking it. Walking through, it's fine. Just don't drink it. We saw it. Oh, we, we can walk through it. We just can't drink it. We saw. Oh, so can touch it? Yeah, we saw a two-headed guy drink it from an earlier. It's no, not good. Oh no! Jibber jabber! What did you do? Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> We can't talk yeah. to your friends because we don't understand what they're saying. All right. Thank you very much. I keep forgetting. And they go back to eating the crystals. Well, guys, do we? What do you say? Did Are we going to ford, ford the river where one of us gets dysentery? <laughs> oh, one of those Zorns is now called Terry. Yes! All right. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> Dissing Terry. Anyways, um, yeah. Um, so if um, Hogan could walk through it, could uh, would it be deep on Trin? Like, should it uh, it's way deep for like Melody, so it'd probably be like Trin. Would it be like neck deep? She could walk, but it'd be up to her neck, so she might accidentally yeah. swallow water. Yeah. She has oh, a bit of a fly. Oh, good. Serious. Oh, yeah. Trin, want to ride my shoulder? Sure. I mean, I could just fly on the broom. Wouldn't oh, that be yeah. easier? I'll do that. Oh. All right. Nothing. You get on the broom of flying. <laughs> Should we go cross, guys? Yeah. Uh, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Okay, how about I go first? You guys see if I survive. Okay. Good luck, buddy. Okay. Hogan is pulled underneath the current and dies. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Sorry, guys. Hogan, as you... The water is... It's, I'm playing. The water is... Yeah, it's waist deep. It... For you... Uh, or it's actually, like, thigh deep for you. Yeah. It is incredibly stinky. Like, it smells like it's poisoned. Um, and, yeah, you see just all of this... Um, oh, there, good. I wonder why the water is like this. Okay, guys, uh, did I make it? I mean, like... Yeah, I yeah, you made it. The water, it, There's nothing oh, in the water right. of, like, yeah, you're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. How you doing, Mikus? On the okay. other side of the river. I'll come back with the light. <laughs> well, Mikus don't need the light. Hey, Stark Vision. And uh, Trin has dark vision as well. I do as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just me. basically just right. using it to help do. Melody see. Before Egress, I think it didn't have it. Did we wanna? Do we wanna keep going along the river, or do we wanna just try to keep going south? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was. Because I don't want to. I don't want to get too far away from that spider area, so that next time right. we get our rest, we can just. I was actually just thinking that I wouldn't mind figuring out why the water is like this because i am kind of mad for jibber jabber i kind of if there's something up um is there a way to walk along the looks like we'd have to walk in the river i say you could walk alongside the river it'd probably be like ankle deep for everybody but trend but she's on her broom mm. yeah i can go wherever i'm i'm good yeah i'm out by trend i'm flapping <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. As long as he's uh, as long as he's out of the range of the flame tongue, yeah, he can fly, right? Correct. So it's forty feet, so you have to remain forty feet back. So four squares back. Uh and then it has to be dim light, I think, if I remember correctly. So forty feet and forty. Yeah, so you have to be constantly forty feet back. Or forty feet up. How or forty feet ahead, oh. yeah. How high is it? Uh, up here, it's probably like 30 feet. Uh, but we see. could be like up and like a little bit ahead, maybe. Yeah. Scout ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mikas, Mikas is great for scouting. Like He's really good. <laughs> He's awesome. He's so sneaky. He's so sneaky. And he's got that dark vision. Yeah. Oh, hey. We oh, see, sorry. as we're going across this thing, I mean... I imagine, I'm. I guess I'm kind of just looking at the map, but do we 
notice that there's like a discoloration on the ground or is no just this is just some type of this is just artist interpretation ah okay cool. yeah it doesn't look like this in the actual book so it's just artist interpretation all right cool should we check these little paths as we go by just like Flip i can run down here and run back if you get down south here yeah, yeah sure Ogden, give her a no <clears throat> perky. Okay, excellent. Nope. <laughs> okay, um, excellent. You guys just don't hear anything. Oh, you didn't go down all that way? Okay. Well, I went to here and looked down. Yeah. Did I see anything? Just a tunnel. Trail? Just a tunnel. <laughs> just the tunnel gets narrow. Okay. And Thanks keeps going. Yeah. That's super narrow. Go back. Yeah. I'd have to walk sideways down that way. Not to send me down. <laughs> yeah. If there's that. Yeah. You're just wading through the water. Trin flying on her broom, Melody and the Armikus in the back flapping his cape. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't we want Mikus uh, out front? We wanna, well, we, either way, I mean, Mikus is doing what he wants to do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, okay. I guess it doesn't really matter either way. <laughs> you see that stuff to the north? Does that connect to some of the previous stuff we've done? We've gone through. Okay, as you get to where you are, you see a little fish man just standing there. Guys, shh. Somebody uh, down there. Let me pull us. Oh, he'd see my light anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Would my comprehend languages still be up? Yep. I want to hold the last. That last 10 minutes. No, yeah. wait. Um, Let me see. I'm going to double check that. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. It lasts an hour. You would still understand oh. what you're saying. They're like, why is the, uh, the fish is all poison? I'm so hungry. <laughs> Uh, Melody pokes his head around. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, hello. Um. Howdy. Do you need food? We have lots of food. Uh, you know, lots of most people, when they see our kind, they attack us. And you see this, like, three foot tall, little, like, purple gray fishman wearing tattered brown clothes. And you get the idea, these are the fishmen that, um, Jibber Jabber was talking about. And he's like, um, me and my family are down here. Uh, uh, if you're nice to us, we'll offer you food and a place to rest if you need it eventually. Oh, that that sounds most hospitable. Thank you. He's he's telling us that he will house us, uh, fellas. He um, seems quite amicable. That's it. The fish we've been eating is making us really sick. So if you want to eat it, you'll you might get sick. Oh no. Okay. That's uh that's terrible. Yes, I figured you know I'd warn them. They're not attacking us. Like that one group with the, the furbolg and the gnome, you remember that gnome? She had a wand? Yeah. Sorry. Gimp Glimp is is kinda rude. He lost his arm. No problem, no problem. Uh do it do any of you fellas know how can I can I see this fish that it's Making people sick. Okay. And he throws a fish at you. <laughs> All right. It plops down in the sand. Just... All right. Uh, can Melody, like, inspect it? See what's going on with it? Give me a medicine check. Okay. I love Kuwatoa. They're so cool. 16. Um, it looks fine. But it smells like the taint. It smells like a taint. It smells like the same taint coming from the river. Hmm. Yes. See, it smells bad, but we don't. Yeah, you know, we can't. We there's no other food for us, so we just eat that, and we got we get really sick. <laughs> is is he like acting normal? Do you think? I can't really tell what he's saying. Oh, is he, uh, is he, is he through, I asked him for a fish, and he uh, gave it to me to look at for a bit. Um, 
he seems nice. I don't know. Does he seem nice? I, I mean, see. I see. Yeah, he, he just seems nice because you're not hostile towards them, so yeah. they're just like nice to yeah. you back. And he just said that, hey, they're nice. They're not attacking us like those other people. Right. Yeah. Um, Hogan is going to uh, reach into his backpack and uh, pull out that mess kit with the stew. He immediately, that Kuatoa immediately runs over to you, just like, oh my god! His little feet burn through the sand and he comes up here. to you. Oh! Here, share this with your family. Guys, guys, they gave us food. They're nice people. We should take them to go see. We, uh, 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 we should take them to go see. Uh, we should take them to go see Nogaloop. Uh... They want to take us to go see Moogaloop? And he runs back. What's Noogaloop! Who's Moogaloop? Noogaloop! Noogaloop? Okay. Noogaloop. Noogaloop. Yeah, it looks like there's uh, someone of some importance on this level that... Uh... Ha! Look what they gave me! Look what they gave me! Look what they gave me! Ask him what a Noogaloop is. Hey. Hi. You wanted to take us to go see Nugaloop? Is that a person, a title, a thing? Uh, Nugaloop is our archpriest. Oh. 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 Trin is a priest. Nugaloop. What? <clears throat> uh, he's a priest? Yeah, Nugaloop oh, is okay. a priest. All right. Oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah. What was that? Uh, I'm just, I'm all for experiencing other cultures. <laughs> all right. Oh. Hey, Mikus, we might be checking this out. You're muted, buddy. You're muted. <clears throat> all right. All right. <laughs> uh, what do you guys, you get, yeah, we want to go south? Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Yeah, sounds good. All right, buddy. Do I know something. All right. So as you kind of come down, you see just how many Kuatoa are resting here. Oh! oh. oh. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that uh, little bowl of stew ain't gonna feed many of them. He's like, um, 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 Mr. Chubby Belly Man. Um, if <laughs> if you take uh here here here, and he points to. Uh, this Kuatoa right here, who's holding a whip, and it kind of walks towards you and says, Yeah, uh, follow me. This way. Alright, my name is Melody. These are my friends. I'm Blim Blim Sim Blukup. Alright, Blim. Blim Skim Bumpusim. Excellent. Nice to meet you. I know it doesn't sound the same every time I say it, because it's tough to say. <laughs> That's totally fine. Okay, follow me. Excuse me, this way, pardon everybody. Me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. They're all just like eating these. This it's all they're all just eating these fish that are clearly poisoned, and they're just like, oh hi, oh hello, 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 and you're just Melody. You're hearing every single thing they're saying from your comprehend language. It's just this. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at these people. Oh, they're nice. <laughs> oh no. And eventually, you get led down this way. Excuse me. Pardon me. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. You guys are very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. What do you have in that in, in your special pouch? And one of them pokes your belly. Oh, gosh. No, that's my belly. It's, it's just my guts. Oh. <laughs> and then it goes back to, like, eating its gross fish. And eventually, you get led into this small cavern. This, and this guy's like, all right. Uh, here you go. Uh, talk to him. Bye. And he goes back. Uh, uh, okay. Tries to go sideways through this little tunnel. Yeah, sure. Um, I totally should have described that cave you guys were just in. Sorry. Um, you guys see two Kuatoa with whips, the 30-foot hall cave coated in slime, 20 adult Kuatoa, and 10 young ku Kuatoa, like little babies, reside here. One was standing watched by the river, while the others rest on pallets. And they all appear like sickly from eating that fish. And you see along the river's edge, 
you guys would have spotted these easily to step over, were caltrops made of sharpened fish bones. Mm. Oh. Uh, the room you guys are in now, still coated in slime. You see the, the Kuatoa known as Nul Galoop is building a statue in the middle of this 30-foot high cave while two of those Kuatoas with whips stand just looking at like confused and perplexed. Mutilated monster carcasses piled around the room's perimeter ex ex exude a putrid stench. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit, doesn't it? I'm gonna try and parlay with the with the leader here. See what we can learn. All right. You wish uh, to parlay hello. with me? Hello. Hello. Name's Melody Buford Forrester. And he, Melody will take, give him a bow. I am new. Uh, I am new Galoop. Here. And he kind of claps his hands and casts tongues on himself. Oh. What did he say, Melody? Uh, I believe. I said <clears throat> I'm Nul Galoop. There it is. But you don't, you, I, don't think, I don't think you understand it, though, if he casts tongues on himself. Nope. Right. Okay. Oh. He actually, he's going to touch all every single one of you. I mean, how many spell slots does he have? For <laughs> Maybe it's an at-will spell. That would be nice. Nope. He uses... Yeah, he'll touch... doesn't need to touch Melody, so he touches the other three of you with and casts tongues on you guys so you guys can converse with him. Okay. I am Neil Galoop. I am... Very Sing pleased it. you haven't harmed my friends out there. Didn't give us any reason to. Exactly, you're not like the last bunch. I hope those four met a grisly end. Mm. No. Indeed. They, one of them had. Excellent. Oh yeah, we did see a, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So... Right. Uh, I... Just... Oh, sorry. Oh, please. You go ahead. I am so rude. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted... We were just making our way through this uh, area and uh, came upon your people. And we heard that there was uh, some poison food and poison water. And it's just a pain in your guys' sides. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it poison? Oh, um, well, huh. that would probably be because of Eidolun, who dwells deeper in the Twisted Caverns. His, he has tainted the caverns with his presence. Eidolun? Eidolun. Eidolun. That okay. sounds bad. Are you Eidolun. agents of his? No. Uh, I don't even know who Never. that is. I've never heard of him. Oh, well, if you're not agents of Alun, then you'll aid me in completing my statue here. What's it of? What's the statue of? It is Can I see? a statue of my god. Well, the new god we are making, Klabu. Klabu? Klabu. Basically, what you guys see, basically, right now, It consists primarily of a decapitated limestone statue depicting a bare-chested male sea elf. Its hands have been replaced with troglodyte claws, which you guys have seen before. And a pair of rusty short sword blades that thrust outward from the statue's breast, and it wears a kilt of green moss. A rusty lantern serves as the god's head, inside which rattles a fist-sized green gem. Nice. That's a that's a quite an impressive uh, craftsmanship on that. Thank you. It's going to be our new god, Klabu. The uh, new god? Was was there an old god? How dare you! Oh, oh, sorry. I, I, I 
Sorry, I didn't mean to know that was offensive. Sorry. You know, your new god looks really cool. I know. Thank you. Yeah. I demand that you and your friends help. All right. Uh, Excellent. Sure. Excellent. Wonderful. The last group didn't, and well, I'm glad to hear one of them had a grisly end. But what would you like us to do? I need the legs and fur of a giant spider to be fashioned into wings. And he kind of like goes like this with his arms. Into wings! I need enough wood to, bu to build a chariot. <clears throat> and a weapon this... worthy of a Kuatoa god. This sounds spectacular. I'm loving it. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do this. So spider legs and wood, that's uh, all? That's what you need? Spider wood and a weapon. All right. They'd like a weapon as well, yeah. Worthy of a coup until right. God. Yeah. Um, I have. As for the corpses you guys can see, you guys see the rotting collection of these, like, Stingray-esque creatures that you don't recognize that are wrapped in a net, a bugbear's severed head and torso, a dead skinless bird about six feet tall that has hooks for hands. And a headless carrion crawler swarming with maggots. You got quite a collection going. We're trying out different parts. Mm. It's oh, important for... to experiment, yeah. It is. Oh, for, your, for your statue or to eat? For Klabu. Right. Well, spider parts? We need the legs and fur of a giant spider. Enough wood, wood to build a chariot. And a weapon worthy of a Kuatoa god. Well, uh, you say wood. We, we do know about some mushrooms that are kind of wood-ish. Would that work? Did you bring them? No, but we can. Then why would you mention it? Well, we can we can Bring, bring me what I need! <clears throat> okay. okay. Do you know I'll... where there's a spider? <laughs> No. Oh. No. Well, we right, well, didn't we see some spiders before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I just thought there might be one closer. <laughs> oh yeah. Th I mean, I'm sure there is oh. somewhere. Oh. And in the netting, you see the body of a furbolg dressed in plate armor, whose head has been kind of like split in twain. It looks like they like scooped out the brains and then realized the brains weren't good enough for the statue and just left them on the floor. Oh God. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah. They, um, they called him Juniper. <laughs> he dead now. Just, Juniper. You would have remembered the name Juniper screamed last session by oh, yeah. the uh -huh. gnome. Hmm. Yikes. All right. Uh, they, uh, you, would you mind if we, uh, look through their body? No. It's sacred. It's for Klabu. All right, no problem. Uh, so, the uh, what is south of this position? Oh, um, well, well, more of us. Those ones got got crazy. They went crazy from the fish. Oh, uh, then you got like more of this, more dungeon, and you got these stinky lizards. Mm. Like, mm. Th like those, and he points to the claws on the statue. Mm. Do we recognize those? Yeah, you guys have seen troglodytes before. Yeah. Well, guys, looks like uh, looks like our task is clear. We head back up north, collect some of that timber, and kill that goddamn spider nest. Yeah. Yeah. Bring us back parts. You yeah. got it. And we will bring... We'll bring Klabu to his ascension. I will bring you the most worthy of weapons. Okay. Hogan hmm. whispers to Melody. What do you got in mind? <laughs> I got something in mind. Okay, I trust you. 
I have an extra battle axe. Think that would help? Yes. All right. I give him the battle axe. Well, no. Not oh. my great axe. I actually... And he I, puts I the battle axe in the statue's hands. <laughs> okay. I gotta take that out of my equipment. <laughs> I had so good... They Maybe they want to. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Let's All right. go. Yeah, let's 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 get going. We need to get working. So, uh, back I up. guess we head north, north now. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like it, we could um, probably you know spend a few hours chopping down some more of that wood. And then once think that tree would be big enough. I don't know. Talk. You would, I, you would know, you would know that that tree that you cut down is big enough to build a chariot out of. Oh, for the, the yeah. size of the statue they're building, yes. Oh well, then there you go. They're just these just are just little guys down the river. That's true. They are little. Okay. Oh, this isn't too difficult then. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's do that. What do you guys feel about that? Just doing that first, going over there. Chopping, uh, like rolling that log out over here and then uh, floating it down to him. Yeah. <laughs> floating logs. Floating logs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Let's do. Let's do that. All right. All right. Do so we can... encounter anything on the way? <laughs> you encounter an ancient red dragon. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> no. Buddy, you guys, buddy. we'll say over the course of probably 30 minutes, you guys get back to where that tree was that you had cut down. So you can move your tokens back there. Um, which way did we go? Back past the Zorns? I'd imagine. I don't know. Or this trail. <laughs> As we go by, just like, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi again. Oh, oh no. Oh, as you go by, yeah, they're like, oh, hi, hello, Melody. Hey, they remembered your name. I didn't know that, never mind. Did not. And you guys get the log, <laughs> and Ogden and Migas pick it up again. And I'm riding on it again. Now that you guys are carrying the log, it'll be a little bit longer to get back, probably about an additional 20 minutes, so it takes 50 minutes. All right. Melody will begin casting as he's like I guess writing the log. He'll right. make sure that his uh, Comprehend Languages is up to date because okay. otherwise we'd get there and they'd just be like blah, 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 blah. yeah, like Murlocs from Warcraft. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So you guys eventually, after about fifty minutes of traversal with this log through the water, no issues. You guys eventually get it back to. Um, Noogaloop, and with comprehending language, he's just like, oh, wonderful, thank you. No problem. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, it wasn't, it really, it was no problem. So yeah, you just kind of, he just puts the log, he puts the log over here. Or you guys put the log over there, he can't carry it. He's like, all right, just need the other parts. All right. All right. How long has it been? Like, where are we in terms of long rest? Like, how many hours left? I think we could. Uh, I think we about could, two. Okay. I think we could uh, definitely get into another scrap before long rest. I think. Okay. Okay. Are you threatening us? No. No, not you. No, no worries. Spiders. Yeah, we need to no, get the spider. Just put a hand up. He's not. He's, he doesn't have tongues. He doesn't have. To, how long does tongues last for? Actually, because if so, oh yeah, tongues would have worn off. So he does not understand what you guys are saying to him. Except oh. he can only right. hear melody. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Okay. Okay. All so right. We got some paths north that we could scope out, see if they connect to some of the southerly paths, um, the main route that we took east. Yeah, see if there's other ways to get to the spiders, basically. Yeah, yeah. Other than the big... Yeah, that's, that makes sense. 
This way. Nailed it. Yeah. Alright, so you guys start making your way to where Ogden is. Sorry, I'll get out of the way. Are you guys still flying, you flyer ones? I get on the ground once I'm on dry land. And Migus just flapping his wing. Oh, if Migus gets too close, then he can't flap his wings anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so he's just like staying 40 feet away, just <laughs> <laughs> flapping over the water. Big bug bear. You would have quite an arm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, flying bug bear. Quite a wingspan. Yeah, like really? a like a twenty foot wingspan. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. And yet you're so stealthy. <laughs> Somehow. The it's the fur that kind of softens the sounds. Yeah. And he's also I imagine the wings are dark, so you probably can't see well. Dark. And yeah, you see. Bears are surprisingly quiet. They are scary fucking quiet. Oh, I bet they are. You seen those videos of people like mountain biking and a grizzly bear just comes running out of the bush beside them? Holy oh fuck! Oh, that, that one specifically was actually uh, that was a that was a doctored. Oh, not that one! Not that one! I know the one you're speaking. But that of. was really cool. There yeah. are there's like a ton of them where bears are just like done. come out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, especially like bluff charging and everything. Fuck I can imagine yeah. with like padded um, feet and with I, like yeah. Can uh, Hogan roll perception to see if there's anything? Um, different? this is a new room. With though, you guys have already like where you guys are. You've actually already passed through this area. It was lit up. You never went into this area, but it was lit up from the flame tongue. Right. Uh, but with the flame tongue light, you don't need to make perception checks to see anything hidden because you do not see anything. Okay. Right. This is where the corpses of them. Uh, uh, the uh, 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 ropers, ropers. Uh, yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Correct. That's where the ropers were killed. Yeah. Here's where we just come back, kick one of them corpses. <laughs> yeah. It lets out a. It lets out a. Oh god. Oh. And, and he realizes it's just gas is escaping. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> it lets out a squeaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you just see, yeah. Tunnels. As, as I'm going, I'm listening for any clicking or like spidery noises. Make a perception check, please. Ah, my first perception check. I'm so good at this. Um. Natural one. No. <laughs> it's a uh, 19. Oh. Yeah, you don't hear anything. Because I, I have plus seven. Yeah, you don't hear anything. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I can reveal this big space. Stay down here so Melody can see. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Melody. go around quarters, you can't see so good. This is very true. Yeah. I'm going to reveal this, too. See, so yeah, I'll just, like, explain this. It's not... This, all this, like, gray here is all just, like, solid rock wall. Right. So you guys can get an idea of what it is. It's, That's the mountain. That is part of this. The world. Uh, yeah. And these are like the tunnels carved through it. I just like to reveal it because it looks. It makes it look re better. All right, fellas. Last time we were here, What's this there were room? people approaching. There were people approaching us from the oh, south right. while we were running from. The spiders. Or drown. Last time. So we should, yeah, we should probably keep, should keep it easy. Maybe it? have. I figure we should, and maybe have Mikas go and scout what's going on south if he if he's willing. You want me to go left or right? Which one do you want to go? Yeah, we didn't. Uh, this is where we seen or heard drow voices coming from. Which one? I think it was uh, this one. But yes, I'm not that sure is the direction you guys heard the voices, yes. Can't hear you, Lucas. He's asking if you should go left. Oh, yeah, that's right, though. 
But his it's left. left. It's his left. Yeah. He's He's looking left. at it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Do we want him to go left? Yeah. Okay. No, like it. We want him to go here. There we go. All right, Minkus. As soon as you get right there. Your dark vision illuminates quite a bit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and all, even like, because you, yeah. <laughs> um, but how would you say Megus is entering this area, Jeremy? Threateningly, not threateningly? Sneakily. No, he's kind of dumb, so he's just walking normally. Okay, you, you just walk in. Doop, 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 doop. Wait, what, okay, wait, I can't remember. I can't. I, I didn't hear what you said. What did you, did you say? Dumb. He's walking in, like just normally. Stro yeah, just, just, just strolling. In. Cool. Normal stride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. If you just normal stride in. Why? Uh, as yes, yeah, so you just walk in. They all look at you. They speak to each other quietly, and they look to you. Do you know Elvish or Undercommon? Uh, Mikus. Alright, they speak words you don't understand. Do we hear this? You... From where we are? Well, let me look how far away you guys are. You do not hear the drow speaking, because they're speaking pretty okay. quietly. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna let out a kind of, uh... Like, mumble, growl kind of thing. Oh, oh. my. <laughs> back a little bit. All right. As you back away, they t pay no attention to you. Now walk back in here. Gotta go, bud. Drow or bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> was there? There was drow. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember them fellows we was fighting upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we uh, <coughs> we definitely end up killing lots of drow, but that's mostly because we can't understand them. <laughs> what did they think? I'm gonna hold up six fingers. <laughs> six. Dang. All right. Well, uh, Ogden. <clears throat> now that you still have comprehend languages up. Yeah, indeed. Wait, um, have have I met a drow that I have heard talk be yet? I don't think I have. Well, you do you know Undercommon or Elvish? I know Elvish. Ogden is. You, you Ogden wouldn't talk to a few. You wouldn't have met drow, no. I I wouldn't know that they speak Elvish, so okay. Oh, well, you would know they speak oh, well, Elvish. Because I know they're elves, right? Every, yeah. Everybody would know drow or elves, yeah. Okay, I do speak Elvish. If I'm a translator. All right. I mean, I've I've still got uh, comprehend languages up, so uh, I could probably understand it if I were. Okay. Well, right. Ogden right. understands but, uh, them. He had a friend who was drow. That's how he learned. So, do we want to do we want to just try talking with them? I don't know what we're. I mean, we just we need to get the spider legs, right? I don't know if we should like tempt fate with this. How many were there, Migas? Held up. Yeah. Oh. oh, right, right, okay. Um, I mean, we could try talking to them, but the problem is if it goes south, there's a lot more of them than there are us. Well, I mean, now, I mean, we, we do have, I do have comprehend languages up right now. It might be good to, I mean, if they are friendly, it might be good to uh, make introductions before we start, if we have to run again from... <laughs> From the spiders, like last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's I, yeah. I suppose that's true. Did I notice if any of them were driders or are they? They're all, all just drow. Ain't none of them are spider people. Right. Okay. Would they remember us? <laughs> well, that's the other this, question. I suppose it's decision time. Should we? Try to parlay with these, uh, with the drow. Um, sure. 
Sure. I don't know. Do you feel confident? <laughs> I, I think I feel more confident with you leading in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, because of Baby Alba? To be a little. Well, uh, I mean, I, I will be able to hear and speak. Yeah. Most people find me not very agreeable, despite my my attempts. Oh, all right. I, I mean, I guess I could talk to them. Yeah. We is that what we're doing? Should I should I go go for it? You what see, you all the drow just staring down the corridor at you guys, wondering why you're standing there in sight, just you know, talking. Oh, good. We'll oh. come with you to protect you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, bud. Um, hello. hello? Oh, the drow turning you. Are you speaking Elvish, uh, Trin? Yeah, I'll speak Elvish. Okay. How are you guys doing? <sighs> Great. More adventurers. <sighs> oh, you, you guys are adventurers? No, I, no. We're, we're oh. tired of adventurers coming into our home and disturbing things. Malith! Oh. Malith! Malith! Uh, we have well, people I... here to talk to you, I guess. Just a second. Just just don't do anything. Don't move. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll just stay right here. That's fine. Jeez. Malice! And you guys see a lot of adventurers then? Yes. Uh. Either way, Malice! And you guys watch as two figures approach from this quarter over here. Another drow woman. And beside her, you see a man, another drow, dressed in kind of like flowing grayish robes. And he has a book under his arms. Um, where you guys have entered, uh, the drow that are speaking to you right now, that like said, hey, just hold on, are standing on top of a ridge of natural rock in the middle of this 30-foot high cave. You see barrel stock and ripple bark mushrooms grow in small gardens around the ridge. Stacks of supplies and gear neatly line the walls, while a small iron pot sits on stones in one alcove. And uh, the woman who approached, uh, she looks like she's more of a priestess. She's wearing like one beautiful, like kind of dark black clothes with, um, like the same kind of obsidian scarab necklaces that you guys have seen uh, before. Mm -hmm. The drow war. And she sees you guys enter, and she says, well, looking at you, Trin, and your friends, but addressing you because you're speaking all this, and she says, what brings you and your friends into my home? Uh, well, you know, we don't really want to bug you too much, but we're kind of looking for um, some spider legs. We were wondering if maybe you might either have some or know an easy place where we could get that. And why do you seek the legs of the children of Lolth? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's just no reason, really. It's just like a, it's a really long story. So then why should we give them to you if there's no reason for us to give them to you? Correct? I mean, you don't have to. We just thought we'd ask since we saw you here. Uh, well... Your friends don't seem hostile quite yet. No. And I can I can assure you, tangoing with us right now is not the best idea. That said, uh, we have no intention of that. Trust me. Quite. That said, I'd like to suggest a temporary, but very much mutually. Beneficial alliance. I'm listening. Only one route between this level of Undermountain exists. Only one route. There are no other ways leading to it. Okay. And that is on the Underground River. Mm hmm. If you destroy Elune. Or those pesky and that or that pesky archpriest Nulgaloop. 
and return to me with proof of either of their demise, I can furnish you all a raft of excellent, excellent proportions. That'll fit all of your friends on it with ease, as you have some quite big fellows with you. An unsinkable raft, almost. And, and we would need that raft to get to the other levels? It'll help. Alright. Very much so. That said... That said... Should you renege on this deal, or bring harm to any other fellow drow you encounter, or even the children of Lolth, you may have seen them, the spiders and the driders, I can assure you, retribution will be swift. I can give you the legs you seek, but a deal must be made. Otherwise, I demand you leave now, and don't come this way again. Um, well, uh, that uh, seems like a good deal to me, but I, I would like to discuss it with my group, if you will let me. We will. Please do not leave your shop. We want to hear every word that is said. All right. <laughs> Can they understand? <laughs> you don't know that. Yeah, I'm going to start speaking common when I do speak. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you guys think? Perfect. What do they say? Oh, oh, right. Um, so they're saying that um, they want to make an alliance with us. They'll give us the legs, and they'll give us, like, a fancy boat. But we have to kill Oogaloop and uh, the other the other one. Uh, the, the, I, I have the names written down. Give me a second. I loon. I loon. I loon and, or, or Oogaloop. Or Moogaloop? Noogaloop. Noogaloop. So. Uh, in uh, Gnomish, uh, Melody will say to Trin, uh, uh, I kind of like, I kind of like the little fish people. Mm -hmm. You remember she said one or the other. Yeah, one, I say that in, in Gnome. I say it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be both. It can be one. And I don't think they like uh, Iloon very much. So I think this might be mutually beneficial. Who's who's Iloon? Iloon? We, have we heard of that? Yeah, Iloon is the one who's ma who's poisoning the water. All right. Yeah, they were... Um, the fish guy was was talking about it. All right, so gnomish. Yes. we go to yeah. Alu then. Um, I can't remember where he said. I, it was somewhere underwater, I think. I have uh, one potion. Nugaloop said to the caves to the north. Caves Actually, to the north. where he was. No, yes. Hold on, let me consult my map. Uh, sorry, caves to the south of where Nugaloop is. He didn't say where, actually. He just said, go find the Loon. The Loon's... He didn't say where Loon is. He just said Loon's tainting the river. Oh, didn't Sorry. he... I thought he said that Loon was under the, water, under the water or something. And whatever. Well, we can all go... If we can go and ask him. Uh, I'm sure we could ta uh, deal with the fish folk, and, and they'd probably give us some information about Loon. They seem to know a little bit about him, from what I recall. The drow did mention Iluna as well, so the drow probably knows who Iluna is too. Yeah. Right. All right. Um. And you too. What are you talking about? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Well, <sighs> give us. A, um. Should, yeah. Should I tell him? I say that in Nomish. You can switch back to the common, yeah. Uh. Yeah. We were just talking about um where Iluna might be. I heard. That's fine. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. Probably the same thing. That Hogan I get. says an undercommon to the drow. What's Iloon? What is he? She? It? An undercommon. She replies, an aberration. Uh, that I didn't understand. No, she's speaking undercommon with Ogden. 
one of the Aboleth. Oh, no. Now, none of y'all know what an Aboleth is. Mm -mm. Hogan had heard of it. I heard it was bad, but does not really know what it is. No. Well, I personally, I don't see any reason why not to go with this deal. Are you speaking Elvish again? I'll speak common. They, okay. All right. And she speaks through. She replies in common. I was talking to them, though. Yeah, she can still hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're ten feet away from me, and you just said you accept the deal. Wonderful. I did, I did not say that. I said that I see no reason. I still need to talk to them about it. They need to give the okay as well. I'll, we'll, we'll get to it, okay? We'll, we'll get to it. Every, does everyone... What do people, other people think? We, like, make a vote? Well, would either fat some... We either slaughter some fish people or we fat something that we don't know anything about. We need more info. We need to know more about what this abolith is and what it's capable of. Otherwise, we're just signing a death warrant. Right. It, it's capable of tainting water. Do you know if it has any um, any certain uh, types of uh, weapons that would be effective or not effective against it? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, that, that didn't answer my question. All we know is that it's tainted this underground river. It has killed off fish and other river dwellers. All right. Have you seen it? No. Okay. Does okay. it live in the river? It lives in a cavern underwater south of here. It is not restricted to water, it can come on land, but it generally chooses not to. And it's an aberration. An aberration, yes. <sighs> it's only just my offer on the table, otherwise... You can make the river down the way. Make your way down the river by your own means. It's no harm to me what you do. Can I insight her just to make sure she's not gonna, you know, attack us if we? Back she's out pretty blank faced, so you okay. wouldn't be able to make much of a insight off of that. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not. Continue. Uh, should we we back up? Yeah. Yep. Alright. So no deal then. Uh no, we won't we won't push, we won't fight against whatever you got going on here. We won't intrude. Uh we will investigate further and make our way through. Uh, thank you for the tip about how to get beyond on the water or through some type of raft. And thank you for presenting us with a deal. All right. Since you do not take me up on my offer, we have eyes and ears all around this level and the previous levels. You may have heard of my house name, Alvrindar. It's quite well known. You all would have heard it, because you remember one of the main drow from the previous level was an Alvrindar. Not me. <laughs> no. And she says, The spiders speak to us. Should you taint yourselves with the blood of our kind and of Loth's children again, as I said, retribution will be swift. All right, well, don't... Can, just make sure they, can you make sure they don't attack us, then? No, they're spiders. Okay, well. We don't control them. We just 
coexist. Right. Hmm. Stay all at right. the back. All Stay right. at the back. <laughs> they all Bye. watch to make sure you guys leave. Did uh, did that book that he was carrying? Did it? Uh, or was it? Was it the guy that was carrying it or the gal? Uh, I said it was a guy, but apologies, it is a woman. Also, both of them are women. Oh, okay. Uh, did did that book look like the have the stereotypical eccentricities? that one might see on a spell book? Yes. God damn it. I know, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. We're back, backing out, backing out, backing out. Thursa, should they come back, burn them all alive? All right. Hear that? Now let's get back to eating that dragonborn that came this way. <laughs> All right, and you guys back up and away from that whole ordeal. Hogan says to the group, uh, "We need to get out of your your eye shot if that's all right." Yeah. Um, and you can hear the screams of someone being eaten. Oh, oh. oh good. <laughs> they didn't even says, uh, she said it was an aberration. I don't know what kind, but I have fought illithids before, and illithids are aberrations, and they are very strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of want to just kill all these drow. Right. They have, they have info. They have, uh, they have arcane knowledge that I need it. I need it. Yeah, man, it's a spell book, buddy. Sign, the first sign. It's the first sign of any knowledge. And it was a yeah, fat. It was a. It was a fat spell here. book. Fat Man, dude, we could have we could have bargained for that. <laughs> no, for a spell you book, no. so? you cannot. You cannot. Oh, is it destroy it when? Book. You cannot take a spell book from a mage. They will not give that shit up. You gotta kill them. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so you want you want to kill these guys? I mean, <laughs> one. I really like the, our little fish friends, and we can't help them out unless we kill some spiders. But but they were gonna give us spider legs. No, they weren't. Didn't they say they were gonna? They were going they to, weren't. but you reneged on the deal. You didn't. Well, you chose not to take it. Yeah. They mentioned spider legs. Yeah, they did. What? Yeah, they mentioned they're gonna give you spider legs if you did something for them. Mm, they did. I don't trust that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit weird. <laughs> I mean, do you think we, uh, we're all? There was just the one that was the spellcaster, right? Nope. Well, oh, no. It looked, were... it, it looked like there was only one spellcaster. The other one looked like a priestess. Yeah. Okay. The one, like the one main one speaking, looked like a priestess. And then the rest were just kind of like just carrying swords, kind of sort of. And deal. crossbows. Yeah. Crossbows and swords. Armored. Yeah. What was the light situation in that cavern where they were? They're drow, so d -d -d dark. Dark. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dark. Okay. Yep. Well, what do you guys? <laughs> I'm what willing to fight him if you want. I mean, I think this is probably really uh, stupid, but <laughs> uh, we're we're not at a hundred percent here, so yeah, I'm. Uh, I can do some things, but I, I'd be like, oh, God, I gotta get that. I, gotta I mean, I do that. have things that could probably get a 
a bunch of them at one time, but I just, I don't know how. <laughs> no. We'll have to come back later. You think? Um, and at yeah. that moment, an hour goes by, which means if you guys want, a long rest is now op is now available. Oh. Cool. You know, as it comes to think of it, I'm feeling a bit sleepy. Uh, I, sure. <laughs> I think we could uh, perhaps go south a bit. Um, explore yeah. that. There is a path here. Maybe. Uh, do we want to go talk to the fish people again to see if we could get any more information about these two god things? No. Nah. No? No, you do that another day? I don't think, I don't think they can. Uh, I don't think they know what's going on too much either. Yeah, probably not more. They didn't to to even know that know that the uh, Abolith was causing the disease and poison. Yeah, they, they mentioned his name, but they didn't say it was an Abolith, so I don't, I don't know if they would know anything. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, we, um, we could go south for sure. Let's do it. <laughs> Mikas, how you feeling, bud? Oh. What? Didn't hear you. Y'all want me to go right now? Uh, you can go south. Yeah, maybe uh, it's quieter this time. Okay. Yeah, a little bit sneaky. Try being, yeah. try being sneaky. You're really good at it, bud. I, I think yeah. you should try doing that just by default. Yeah, yeah, just. All right, Mikas, give me a stealth check if that's what you're gonna do. Sixteen. Sixteen. <clears throat> Noted. Okay. I'll start working the way down. Peek around corners. You All did right. that at uh, you did that at advantage. Okay. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, listen to Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Sorry. Migas, you hear the sound of a bat die. Like a and then Always a good sign. Probably not. It might mean more ropers. <laughs> <laughs> and you see it you see this little tunnel Mikas expands into an opening <clears throat> and yeah you see just you see uh the ceiling here is about 50 feet high, but slopes down to 30 feet high towards the southeast. Natural shelves and ledges line the walls, ranging in height from 10 to 30 feet. Hiding in the shadows atop 10 foot high ledges are two <coughs> drow. And they, even with your stealth check, they immediately see you because it's an open cave system. And. Ah! Yeah. They are up on these ledges. Well, the one sees you, the other one doesn't. The other one's like, oh, in the language you don't understand, says something to you. And they both, and this one right here just kind of looks at you. And as you are looking there, Mikas, you also see a sort of log that crosses a little bit of a chasm. And the drow just looks at you. I'm gonna do my little mumble growl thing and turn around again. Yeah, as you do that, you get, you're <laughs> gonna get one of them looses a crossbow bolt at you. Oh god. And you guys can hear the. Actually, how far, how far back are you guys? Ah, uh, you would not hear it. You would not hear this, the mechanism of a crossbow fire. So, that is. I'm sure Mikus is fine. Eh, natural one. The crossbow bolt, ting, they off the wall, and it starts reloading its crossbow. Alright, how far up is that one? Uh, well, it's 
this one right here, so from you it's currently 10, 20, 30, 40 feet away, and it is 10 feet off the ground. So it's 50 feet away from you. Um, I'm immediately going to let out just a blood-curdling roar, like just as loud as I can. Yep. Uh, so 10, 20, 30. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, as soon as uh, Augen hears that, he's going to run, and his speed right now is 50. All right. Well, I need everybody to roll initiative then, please. Okay. Oh. We just... We just, yeah. We're, we're, we're just like, we're not gonna. We, we oh, gonna fight the drow now. Drow. Oh, boy. All right. All right. So, I'm gonna add you guys' turns. So. Hey, he's starting. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's totally what Mika's would have done, for sure. Hold on, let me roll their initiative first. Maybe we don't send me because that's a <laughs> His Jeremy really doesn't want to <laughs> be. <laughs> no, nobody. You don't want to be a leader anymore. It's like, I'm going to get him into trouble. <laughs> All right. Mikis, what'd you get for initiative? A natural 20. So, what's your oh. plus what? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Plus five. Twenty-five. Augen, what would you get for initiative? Nineteen. Nineteen. Melody. Seventeen. And Trin. Two. Two. With your initiative modifier? Yep. I get a plus zero. <laughs> Gross. Not <Help> much. <laughs> Alright. So, Mikus, it is your turn. Immediately. Yep. Reaching up. Go out for it. Uh, You're actually in a real good spot. From where you are, uh, five, and then it's ten feet up. So that's, you have fifteen feet reach, right? Yep. Yep, you can reach. Cool. See, I'm ruling at the lines of each square, like to each square of five feet. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you can reach. Go for it. Third. Uh, first one is at seventeen to hit. Yep. Second one is at seventeen misses. They are heavily armored drow. Okay. Actually, no, because I had a strength upgrade. That is 11 plus 8 is 19. Sorry. 11 plus 8, 19. That'll hit. Roll damage. Still a D10. Uh, there is 8 damage on the first one. Okay. Eight damage on the first one. Okay, give me one little baby second. Sorry, I'm just used getting my initiative thing. I forgot to set up my initiative. Well, my other my health track my my document where I track health. Okay, and the other drow is called Steve. No, it's, uh, what is it? Thank you. Okay, so it was eight points of damage, correct? Yes. Okay, you slash up with your glaive and deal eight points of slashing damage. And he's just like, ugh! The extra attack. Go for it. And dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Uh, yeah, nah. It's gonna use a reaction and parry and raise its AC to th by three. Dirty. So its AC becomes becomes nineteen twenty twenty one. And it parries the attack. Okay. Ah, uh, asshole. Uh, I'm gonna like twirl around and come at him again with the cannonball. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, 23. That hits. Roll damage. Uh, 
big old D4. Oh, four. Nice. Yeah, and that's your turn then, I guess, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, yeah, that drow is going to retaliate by shooting you with a crossbow bolt. Uh, uh, 13 to hit. Misses. Yep, that missed. So he is just going to reload his crossbow. Alright. Augen, it's your turn. Augen's going to rage. And then move 10, 20. 30. As he comes around the corner, he sees mm -hmm. this guy over here. He does. He's 10 feet up. Uh, yeah, they're both 10 feet up on ledges. Oh. And, wow, well, can't hit with a sword 10 feet in the air. Even though I am 8 feet tall, I should be able to reach out, reach up and, like, uh, swing my sword at his ankles. Or? No. <laughs> Out of range, unfortunately. I know. You can jump and do it. I'd let you do a jump attack, but it'd be with disadvantage. Get that crossbow, though. Yeah. And then I have to put my sword down. And All the light goes away. All right. Yeah, that that wouldn't be good. For my yeah, this sword thing is something else. <laughs> Uh, well, if I can't reach him, I can't reach him. What can I do? Nothing. Right? It looks like you could climb up there. Because they, they obviously would have climbed up there. It's only 10 feet high. Well, okay. I've only come 40 feet. My speed is 50. Can I climb up the 10 foot? I say yes. But then I can't attack him. Oh, yes, I can. Yes. All right, I'm up on the ledge with them. Now. Yeah, climbing is still movement. It's just half your speed. Or it takes every two feet. It's ten times as difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get up there though. All yeah. righty, then I'm going to attack him. Fantastic, make an attack roll. Twenty, not twenty. Not, nah. sorry, not Matt, dirty toy. Oh, yeah, since this one hasn't used his reaction yet, he's going to parry as well. Ting! His AC becomes 21. <laughs> and uh, another one, then. Yeah, so he parries your blow with the flame tongue. He's just like, ting! Sparks kind of just... <sighs> and that one plus eight. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. The sparks kind of get in your eyes a little bit, and your swing just <laughs> misses. But you're now up on this 10 foot ledge with this guy. All right. all right. Now your turn? I think that's all I can do. All righty. Yep. Mel Melody. 30 feet of movement gets him there. Yep. Can't see anything. He uses his action. I have 10, 20, 25, 30. Would get in there. Uh, he probably still doesn't see anything. You, well, the light of Flame Tongue would show this one. Oh, you could see that? Yeah, because the bright light and dim light radius on Flame Tongue. You'd see this one yeah, standing like 10 feet up. Pretty Hold much on. Like 10, 20, 30, 40. Yep, that guy's just within the bright range radius. This one right ah, here. Well, if he, if Melody sees him as he's around the corner, he'll probably end up moving there instead and kind of end his turn outside his sight. All right, cool. And hug the wall. Yep. This you other can't can't really do anything. Sure. Else. Yep. This other drow uh, with the, on the ledge with Ogden is going to make two short sort of attacks against Ogden. The first one is a. 22 to hit. That hits. Alright, you take 8 points of piercing damage. Oh Reduce to half, so you take, you take 4 piercing damage because you're raging. 
and you take five points of poison damage. Uh. And then the second sword attack. <laughs> the sparks from your conflict get in his eyes as well as he gets a natural one. <laughs> All right. Dummy. So, cool. Trin, it's your turn, and remember, you... Oh, yeah, you're no longer on the broom of flying because you got off to sit on the log. Yeah, would it be an, uh, an action to take the broom out and, yep. and get back on? Okay, yep. then I won't do that. Um, well, yeah. could. Actually, maybe... It, well, yeah, it's, a, it's an action, yeah, it's an action to interact with an object. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So, okay. Yeah, I guess I... I'm probably. I'm gonna see what my bonus actions are. I don't think I have much in the line of bonus actions. Nope. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll, I might as well get on the broom. Okay. And do my fifty feet of flying. Yep. Feet of flying, the same as if I had dashed, but whatever. <laughs> um. So okay, wait. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five. So I get around here. I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and I guess that's that's what I do. All right. And I'm I'm I'll kind of face towards the outside because I'm not sure if these other people are going to come. All right. So you're <laughs> facing the opposite direction. Cool. Yeah. All right. Me kiss. I am going to move just a little bit up here. And Take my swings. Go for it. Oh, natural 20. Natural 20. Nice. Max damage plus roll damage. Alright, so max damage is just the D10, right? Plus modifier. I max modifier. I yeah. do modifiers for criticals too. Okay, so 15 for the critical plus 5. And five is twenty-five damage. Twenty-five total points of damage. Yeah, you carve a big chunk out, and blood sprays out of his torso and splatters across the floor, the walls, and yourself. Your fur is just matted with drow blood once again. Alright, dodge that. Is he still up? He is. Alright, I'm going to take a second swing at Hey, nope, that's gonna be thirteen. Nope, that misses. Blocks even while he's bleeding profusely, he gets his short shirt up in time just to block the blow. Just ting. Alright. Now I'm gonna swing the cannonball at his knees. Okay. And that is a natural nineteen for an improved critical. That's right. Max damage plus roll damage. Oh my god. Oh my god. Destroy uh, this guy. Uh, four plus three is seven damage. Yeah. <laughs> Just seven for that. You animal. crack it across his like knees, and you hear an audible popping, cracking sound. Mm. Yeah. Yikes. Is that your turn, Ogden? Or Mikus, rather? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Alright. Excellent. Alright. Just gonna just look down at you and shoot a crossbow. I got you again. Uh, 19 to hit. Yes, sir. Yes, it does. Okay, so Mikas, you take 7 points of piercing damage and need to give me a constitution saving throw. As the crop of bolt slams into your shoulder. Okay, my con is plus seven, so it's going to be eighteen. Eighteen. You succeed, and he reloads his crossbow. All right, Ogden, it's your turn. All right, frame tongue him again. Yep. <laughs> Another nat one plus eight. Just sparks oh. flying everywhere. Up the heat of the sword. 
Yeah. Eighteen to hit. Reaction to parry. Ting. Because a new round to combat. Okay. That's it. Alrighty. Melody. Gonna move twenty feet. Okay. And then he's gonna he's gonna cast hold person at third level and target both of them. All right. What's the saving throw on that? Wisdom. Wisdom. The one that August fighting is a natural one plus four. Right. So that one is currently paralyzed. Yep. Paralyzed. And the one that Migus right. is fighting gets a 17 plus four. Not held. Nope. Cool. All right. Uh,. And so the one that Ogden's fighting got held? Yes. Uh, no, he's just going to say, hit that son of a bitch. Will do. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then five, ten. All righty. What's your turn? Uh, yes. Yes, he doesn't have anything else All right. to do. The drow that is held is its turn. Right. So it makes a saving throw at the end of its turn, right? Yes. Yep. 16 plus 4. Again. The last time I did hold person, the same thing happened. All right. Uh, sorry, man. It's fine. No longer sp held, paralyzed, but it cannot have any actions. So it is Trin's turn. Um... Can I go kind of to the, into the same spot as Melody since I'm tiny? Well, you're also on a broom, too, so you're like... I'd I'll, imagine, I'll, I'll put yeah. it away when I get there. All right, so you put your broom away. That's an action to put your broom away? Or not, well, um... Actually, no, yeah, if it's an action, then I won't do that. I'll sit on it. <laughs> okay, so Melody, there's currently a, a gnome flying on a broom, like, right beside you in your space. Nice. Okay. Um, I'll give her a. He'll hold up a hand for a high five if she flies by. <laughs> yeah. Um, when there's a, a control on a spell, does that mean. What does that mean? <laughs> it, there's like a little asterisk and it says control. That, does that uh, mean I could like. Concentration. That, oh, that means concentration? Yeah. Yeah. You can only have one of those types of spells okay. at once. Okay. I wasn't sure if it. If you are hit at any point. If you take any damn Oh, sorry, go on, Justin. My bad. Yeah, so basically what he said. Uh, you can only have one of those active at a time, concentration spells. And if you get hit while using a concentration spell, you have to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Okay. So plus, I, I, plus the damage taken, I think. Uh, it's, okay. if, it's only if the damage taken... when it if, the, if you take all of the damage, cut it in half. If it's over 10... Then it's the DC you have to make. So if you okay, yeah. twenty-two okay. damage, half of that is eleven. So the so the DC is eleven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't make that save, the spell goes away. Okay, so that doesn't mean what I thought it meant. So then I won't do that. Um, instead, um, actually, how close can I get? To you still have, you have fifty feet. Of, you have fifty feet of movement on your broom. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do shatter. Let me just check this out. Um and I will do it it's sixty feet. So I'll do it um on the guy who's not near my friend. So this guy over here. Okay, what's the radius on shatter again? It's it's um a ten foot radius. So we'll hit Mikas. Oh, can I do it ab above? the dude so that it doesn't hit me guess. Let me see how far away you are. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yes. I can. Yeah, okay. Then I will do that. Uh, 60 feet. A 10 foot radius. You I can, would, I can move forward. You'd have to cast it right here. 
No, I can, it's a 60-foot range. I understand, but it has a 10-foot oh. radius, so you'd want to cast it right here. Or, okay, ten, or, or 10 feet above it. Yeah, I was going to do 10 feet above it, but um, is, it, is that within range? Should I move forward? That's within range. Okay, then I, that's what I'm going to do. It's uh, right above it. All right. Is there a saving throw for that? Um, it is a constitution saving throw of 15. 11 plus 5, so 16. Damn. Okay. Um, half damage. Half damage. Yeah, half damage. Okay. I'll just find what the damage is. It's 3d8. Okay. Um, actually, actually, you know what? I think I, um, sorry, I, I, can I do that after I've, uh, cause I think I have my, I can make it full damage because it's thunder, have, I think. Have you already rolled though? I rolled one, but. You'd have to roll I, the rest then. I have to roll the rest. Okay. Sorry. Okay. That's 10 plus. Sorry, math. Shatter. Oh, it's just okay. So it's uh, that's ten. All right, takes five damage. Right. And the ledge crumbles a little bit, and some of those Ooh. rocks cascade down and ping off Amigus's face, and he takes like one point of damage. As one of the one point. It's nothing. It's flavor damage. Sorry. I know. I'm just sorry. <laughs> this thunder breaks stuff. And I like it. Or shatter breaks stuff. Alright. Cool. Alright. Uh, is that your turn then? Yes. Alright. Mikus, it's your turn, buddy. The guy up above you is not looking too hot. I'm still holding in on him like a laser beam. Yeah. Alright. Go off the first swing. That's uh, 19. Perry. Ting. Uh, scream at him. And swing again. Sure. Uh, 18. That just hits. Roll damage. Uh, 8. 8 total damage? Yes. Alrighty. And this time, cannonball to his toes. To his toes. Break some toes. All right. Make sure you can't run away. <laughs> uh, 21. That hits roll damage. Two. Two points of damage. And you audibly hear, like, two toes just shatter and become pulverized from the cannonball. And they it's at a whale. Just, uh, uh. Oh, boy. And that's your turn? It's my turn. All right, it's the drow's turn. That drow's turn, rather, and he's gonna shoot you with the crossbow bolt again. Nope, that's a ten to hit. So, well, a ball sax. That's all he's gonna do. Reload. Oh, it's your turn. Flame tongue. Yep. Rage still. Five and eight is thirteen. Miss. He ducks the blow. Oh, seven and eight is fifteen. Ugh. Steps to the side as your flame tongue just like. I'm gonna, oh. All right, so I'm going to frenzy attack this time too, so I get a third attack. Yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, you do. No. Nope. Eight and eight, sixteen. Unbelievable. Just ducks that one too. Your rage is just—it's—it's sh it's showing you. He can predict where you're gonna go because you're just like angry. Just Argh! he's just like <laughs> bobbing and weaving. Oh man, Melody. Uh, how's how's this guy looking, by Mikus? Like boiled shit. All right. Uh. Uh, I guess Melody's gonna peek out and uh, do a ray of frost on him. Sure. What's the save again? Dexcon. No, no save. I'm That's right. Away. It's an attack. That is correct. That's a uh, 
17 to hit. Miss all along the wall. One of the shards like pierces his cheek, but no miss. Uh, I should have another bonus action. The flaming sphere bonus. Oh no. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll go back. All right. Yeah. That was it. All right. Can't your, hit these guys. That's and your turn. They got. Yeah. All right. The drow is fighting Ogden. Two short sword attacks again. First one is an 18 plus 7 to hit. That hits. You take half of 10 piercing damage. You take 5 piercing damage. Oh, it's advantage because you're reckless, right? I forgot to roll uh, advantage because nope. you went reckless. I, reckless. I thought I you did, and you made a third attack. Frenzy. Frenzy. Oh, sorry, that's correct. Sorry. And the second that short sword. said at the yeah. end of my rage, I take a level of exhaustion. That is correct. Second short sword attack is a 16 plus 7 to hit. Which hits. Yeah. 18. Uh, you take half of 5 piercing damage. You take 2 points of piercing damage. Okay. Wait, did I roll the poison damage for the first short sword? Nope. Nope. Thank you. I forgot. Uh, you take 10 points of poison damage from the first one. And from the second short sword attack for the poison, 8 points of poison damage. So 10, it's a total of 18 points of poison damage. Um, can I do short, uh, sorry, stones endurance on the first one? Yes. Uh, reduce damage by 1d12 plus 4. Yep. 2 plus 4 is 6. This is unbelievable. So you take 4 poison damage from the first one. <laughs> having a hell of a... <laughs> I know. I've got like a zillion dice in front so, of me. So, holy crap. A total of. Yeah, 4 plus 8 poison damage. 12. Yeah. So, I had 12 points of poison damage just seeping through your veins. Anyway, okay, good. I've done. Yep. Oh, that was. Trin. Oh, that was turn. Yes, it was. Trin, it's your turn. Oh, right. Um, uh, this guy's still up, the guy next to Mika? Yeah, they both are. All right, I'm going to hit him with Toll the Dead. All righty. So it'll be a d12 of damage if he fails. Okay. And if not, he no damage. 2d12. Wisdom 15. 19 plus 4, 23. So no damage whatsoever. Is that how... Sorry, that's how... It, yes. No damage at all? No damage at all. But I, that's still my action, huh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was pointless. Um... <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess that's, that's what I got. Alrighty. Um, cool. Mikus, you broke this guy's toes. You broke one of his kneecaps. What's next? You're muted. Uh, he's looking like shit. So oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with the cannonball first. And I'm aiming for his jaw. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Get him. Uh, dirty 20. I don't want to waste it. Yeah, roll damage. Oh, max damage, 4. Oof. Ouch. Yeah, you crack this thing across his jaw. Oh, God. <laughs> and you see, like, you see a couple, like, drow teeth go flying out and scatter across the muddy floor. Just plop, plop, plop. They plop into the floor. Because you're a monster. <laughs> Mikus the monster. What's next, Mikus? Um, I'm gonna pull back and like shove straight into the gut with the blade. Go for it. Oh, oh what in there? Oh, uh, that's gonna be is that 24. 24 to hit. 17 plus 8? Yup. Or er, 17 plus 8 is 25. Oh, yeah. So, that hits. Roll damage. Because he can't parry that one. He goes to parry it, but the blade, the, you're too quick, and it's, it sinks into his gut, like, all the way through. 13. 
the glaive sinks all the way through his gut, and it kind of, you hear it kind of come out the other side, and as you pull it out, it severs the spine, and his body just falls over the ledge, lands on the ground in the muck, dead. Awesome. And okay, as I'm pulling it back out, one fluid motion coming down and around. Behind me to hit the yeah. just got cocky sprayed him with blood or something. <laughs> All right, hold on, my internet's pooping a little bit. Uh, so a seven plus eight to hit. Yeah, that's fifteen. No, does not hit. Misses. Um. Uh, just to try to scare the shit out of him, I'm going to run over and jump up on the ledge behind him. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Ogden. This drow has taken, like, no damage. I know. Still at full. All right, same thing. Yep. Nine plus eight, 17. Miss ducks it. Fifteen plus a twenty-three. I finally. Yep, he can't. He can't parry that one. So roll damage. There we go. He goes. He's like laughing how much you're missing, and he's just being cocky. And you swing the sword, and you get it like right in his like shook collarbone, and just bring it down on his collarbone. Ten damage. With the fire damage. Oh, I haven't even done that yet. Yeah. Yeah. And eight more damage, so that's 18. And I still got my friends. 18 down. total damage. Nice. Four plus eight, 12. Oh. So, no, that's it. I'm good. Okay. That was like 30 damage. All right. Melody. Five, 10, 15, 20. No. 5, 10, and uh, he's going to cast Hold Person on him again. All right. Uh, essentially, just have him roll with advantage to count the next turn if you want, because, I mean, that's essentially what's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to so, cast that and head back. So for this round, 17 plus 4. Yeah. First, first roll, so no Hold Person. Yeah. That's it. All right. This drow is going to make two short sword attacks, one at Ogden and one behind at Mika. So the first one to Ogden is a, nope, 3 plus 7 to hit. Nope. He grazes off one of your, like, strong muscles and just doesn't pierce the skin. Swings uh, around. Hits my, hits my shield. Hits your shield. And spins around and goes to stab Mika's in the throat. Fuck me. Uh, 5 plus 7 to hit. So, no. Wait, maybe. No. No. 5 plus 7 does not hit. So the drow just stands there like, uh oh. And it's Trin's turn. Um, I have a lot of friends on this ledge now, yeah? You I've do. got Mikas and Mikas and Ogden, yep. Okay. Um I'm just I'm gonna do Toll the Dead then. Okay. Um, this guy who's still around. Yep. That is a wisdom save of thirteen plus four, so seventeen. No damage. Your, our casters are kind of useless against Yeah. Them. I don't want to hurt my friends, is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's what, yeah. That's what I got. Alrighty. So. Mikis, your turn, buddy. Alright. First one, glaive attack. Glaive. Oh, natural 20. Max damage plus roll damage. God damn, Jerry. You are just. It's okay. He doesn't need me there. That's for sure. Yeah, and he doesn't need. And he doesn't need my whole person because he's just rolling oh. critical. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, max max damage. That's thirty damage. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh yikes. Ogden, you are like panting in, <laughs> from this fight, and you just see Migus's glaive, kind of. You see the tip of his glaive pierce out through the front of this drow's breastplate. 
and the drow just <laughs> coughs up blood that just splatters all across your face, neck, and chest. Right. And then, Mikas, you pull the glaive out. <laughs> And Holy you, you have another attack, Nikis. Alright, uh, first I'm going to cannonball and try to crush him between the cannonball and the cave wall. Yeah, do it. Uh, 19. That's a brutal critical, right? Uh, no, dirty. 19. Oh, dirty? Okay. I can't really look at the roll 20 rolls right away. Uh, yeah, 19 hits. It's 20, or, sorry, not 22. Two points of damage as you, like, crack him in the side of the head. Kind of gives him, like, the thunderclap that wrestlers do. You kind of, like, crack him in the ear, and he's like, oh, and his head is Doof! against the wall. And that's where the, the other one point of bludgeoning damage comes from him. It is his head hitting the wall. Just crack. Yes. All right. And then I'm looking at shoving a creature. Is An additional attack action. It's your athletics plus their athletics or acrobatics. Yeah, so I'm going to put a boot into him to try to knock him prone. Alright, give me, and knock him off the ledge. No, just prone him right there between me and... Uh, me. yeah, sure. Alright, yeah, kick him in the chest. So, yeah, athletics check, please, against their acrobatics that I'm going to go for acrobatics. That's going to suck. I'm not sure which that is. Oh, six! I got ten. You kick him prone. You kick him in the back and just poof, he face plants prone in front of Ogden. Motherfucker. Give him, give him an Ogden the layup. Yeah, yeah. Ogden gets the layup here. Prone. Uh, prone icon. Prone icon. Prone icon. We'll just say prone is this dude having some back pain. Alright. Uh, is, is that your turn, Mikus? My break. Ogden. All yours, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Ogden, it's your turn. Attack with advantage. All right. Which you should have been doing anyway because you were raging. Right? Only if he... I think so. Only if he oh, that's right. Hurt. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. Advantage on your attack, though. On this one, I get 10 plus 8 or 11 plus 8. 19. 19. He's prone. He's going to parry while prone, raising his AC to 21. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so the attack, oh you, you slam the flint into a shield. Just this Hitting guy. Again. <sighs> Seven, 18 plus 8. 26. Come that on, hits. Hit roll it. damage. And he... Oh, no. It's not automatic crit. No, because he's just done, he's just prone. So, yeah. Just roll damage on that. <laughs> uh, 8 plus... Five fire damage. Yep. So 13. Yeah. And my frenzy attack. Yep, with advantage. Uh, 9 plus 8, 17. That misses, unfortunately. Okay. But you plunge, the with, for previous attack, you plunge flame tongue. It kind of passes, grazes past the shield, shaving off a piece of the shield. And the sword, like, plunges, like, two inches into his into his, like, sternum, and you can see the wound just burning as you step through it, automatically cauterizing it as you pull it out. And he is not looking good on the ground. He is still alive, though. Just. Oh, my God. Uh, which means it's Melody's turn. Take him out, Melody. Uh, I can't hit him with any of my ranged spells because he's prone and yep. in elevation position, so yep. we probably have whatever going on. Uh, it'd be, like, three-quarters cover. Yeah. yeah. So And disadvantage. Uh, so, Climb up there and hit him with your... Just punch him. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, slap him. Punch him with a uh, baby No. Uh, I, I guess I'll let you decide if I can do this. Um, but I would like to use the gust cantrip that if they fail to save, it pushes them five feet away. But I'd like to see if I can like, do it to keep them down. Hmm, I'd allow it. Okay. You keep him prone? Yeah, I'd allow it. Yeah, so that's a strength okay. saving throw. How long does Gus last? Because he's just going to get oh, up no, on his turn anyway. Action. Yeah, it's, it's, his, it's his turn throw. next anyway, so he'll just get up anyway. Uh, So can I hold my action to when he gets up? Uh, Yeah, sure. 
All right, I'll hold my action to cast Gust when he gets All up. All right, and that's your turn. Yeah. He gets up. He's no longer prone, but he needs to make a save. What's the save again? <laughs> Strength. Strength. <laughs> Oof. Eleven. Fails. Boosh. Still prone. <laughs> All right, that's his movement. He's going to attack while prone. He's going to swing at their ankles, so it's with disadvantage. He's going to swing at Ogden's ankles first with disadvantage. With disadvantage, that's a 3 plus 7, only a 10 to hit. Nope. He's going to swing over at Mikus' ankles while prone. Ooh, I rolled two 17s. So a 24 to hit. Yes, that hits. All right, Mikus. You take 5 points of piercing damage, and then you take 7 points of poison damage as he slashes at your ankles, just going for your feet. Uh, he is still prone because of that gust, so it's Trin's turn. Okay, I want to go up to... Um, I'm not going to be... If I go up to the ledge, I'm not going to be affected by the gust, am I? No, because it's a one-time thing. Oh, and it's, okay. a single, it's a single yeah. target spell. Okay. Um, I want to uh, get to a, a, a area where I can touch him, yeah. and I want to do inflict wounds. First level. Yeah, make an attack roll with advantage because he's prone. Okay. Ooh, good call. Um, where is that? Inflict wounds. Okay. 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 Both of those were not super great. Uh, would that just? What would that be? What would I add to that? Your spell um, attack bonus. Oh, there it is. Plus okay. Plus seven. Yeah. Plus seven. So that would be a twenty. Dirty twenty. That hits. Roll damage. Great. Uh, yes. Three, ten. Three, eight, ten. Eight, eight, ten. Eight and a five, so that's sixteen plus five is twenty-one damage. Ooh, that's a good roll. You good. touch him, and his body just explodes into drow, ah! into drow goo, and as you're all covered in, as you're all covered in just drow slime and ooze and parts. I got him, guys! <laughs> just just like one of those Telltale games. You see text at the bottom that says, the drow will remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's where we're going to end the session for the week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching, everybody. I can't stay around too too much right now because I have to go say night to my girlfriend and other things. And prep for Beneath the Tide because, oh my god, that was a long session. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. Again, if you're watching us and you joined the Discord recently to, to put in applications for a descent into Avernus game, that'll all be figured out very soon in terms of cast, and we're going to start that for now. Good night, everybody. Bye.